Hello students, we will be discussing the chemistry of photosynthesis uh, in this video class. Uh, this particular video class is actually divided into two modules of a, a single video uh, and uh, chemistry of photosynthesis. Uh, this is uh, this, uh, photosynthesis we have uh, gone through in our lower classes, the basic, aspect, basic aspects of photosynthesis. Now, it's a process which occurs in green plants, algae, photosynthetic bacteria and some organisms like uh, euglena and its role is to trap solar energy and use this to drive the synthesis of carbohydrate from carbon dioxide and water and with release of uh, byproduct namely oxygen. Now, this is the only process uh, in the universe by which uh, solar energy is trapped and preserved as chemical energy in organic molecules. Uh, it is uh, calculated that around 170 billion tons of dry matter is produced by this process annually. And there is a uh, simple basic equation which represents uh, the, this process of uh, photosynthesis. It's a highly simplified representative equation 6 carbon dioxide plus 6 H2O in the presence of light and chlorophyll. Uh, it gives C6H2O6 uh, that is a representation for carbohydrate along with the release of 6 oxygen as a byproduct. Uh, so this is a simple process, this is a simple equation actually, but the process is not that simple. It involves uh, a number of strategies adopted by plants, uh, a number of uh, biochemical reactions and uh, metabolic processes involved are involved in uh, the chemistry of photosynthesis. So we will, uh, we will uh, go on to see the details of photosynthesis. So we start uh, with discussion of some of the basic aspects of photosynthesis. Now, first of all, uh, these are the autotrophic uh, photosynthetic autotrophs, uh, which can be seen here in this slide: the cyanobacteria, euglena, kelp, which is an algae, then uh, mosses, ferns, and higher plants. All these are called autotrophs, which are capable of uh, synthesizing uh, sugar, uh, sucrose, or starch uh, using carbon dioxide, light, and water uh, with the production of uh, or oxygen, the byproduct oxygen, and with the help of chlorophyll. So, this is a basic equation also shown there. Now, the overview of uh, photosynthesis the strategy, the particular strategy adopted by plants. Now, the, the photosynthesis can be divided into two phases the light reaction and dark reaction. Light reaction is also called photophase or Hill reaction. Um, that is actually proposed, it was actually proposed by Robin Hill. And dark reaction uh, is also called C3 cycle or Calvin cycle. And then that is after Melvin Calvin who proposed the, this particular uh, process. The strategy here, the, the, planned, the, the planned strategy here actually is to produce NADPH, the reducing potential, and ATP, the energy currency, during light reaction. Now, during light reaction, the high energy electrons are utilized which are having high reducing potential. They are utilized for conversion of NADP to NADPH as well as uh, synthesis of ATP also. And in dark reaction, what happens is that the whatever NADPH and ATP produced during light reaction are utilized for step-by-step -step reduction of uh, carbon dioxide to uh, carbohydrate. So this is a strategy, basic strategy. Light reaction always take place uh, during daytime only because uh, sunlight is available during that period of the day only. Whereas dark reaction occurs throughout the day, uh, whether it is night or day. So it's uh, actually a misnomer. It should have been light independent uh, reaction, the dark reaction. And C3 cycle uh, is the main uh, reaction uh, or the main phase of the dark reaction. Uh, whereas there, uh, there, there is something else also called C4 cycle which complements C3 cycle. So this is the basic overview of photosynthesis and you can see here uh, the light reaction and dark reaction are, are, are shown in figures. It's a chloroplast here and a chlorophyll uh, molecules are also shown here uh, it is represented here and the water is utilized, light energy is utilized and uh, to produce ATP and uh, NADPH. NADPH. And uh, these ATP and NADPH are actually utilized here in Calvin cycle. Carbon dioxide comes in, sugar goes out, uh, and this is being utilized. And uh, as a byproduct, oxygen also is formed. So this is light reaction where uh, NADPH and ATP are, uh, are synthesized, and the right one is the Calvin cycle. 
Calvin cycle ATP and NADP are, uh, NADPH are utilized. Uh, it's a C3 pathway, there is a C4 pathway also. Uh, and this is more uh, an illustrative figure. Uh, you can see photosystems involved here, as well as uh, some more of the uh, intermediate substrates involved in, um, in C4 cycle or uh, Calvin cycle. Uh, and of course, the, the utilization of uh, water, this is uh, also used. Now, this is photosynthesis and uh, the, the, the um, yeah, these are the factors involved in photosynthesis. Now, of course, sunlight is involved. The visible range uh, emission spectrum 390, 760 nanometers uh, of uh, sunlight. Uh, it's being used for uh, photosynthesis by uh, specific pigments. Uh, the, the chlorophyll A and B, there are chlorophyll A, B, C, D, E. And the chlorophyll A and B are the most prominent ones. They utilize the um, solar energy of 400 to 500 nanometers wavelength as well as 600 to 700 nanometers wavelength. Carbon dioxide uh, is obtained from atmospheric air 0 .0, 0 0.03. A percentage of the atmospheric air is carbon dioxide which enters plants through the stomata. And water is absorbed uh, from the soil. Uh, and it is actually, it has been proved that the oxygen which comes out, uh, which is released, is actually comes from water. This has been proved by radioisotope studies. And uh, the chloroplast. The structure of chloroplast, we have to see the structure of chloroplast. See, uh, these are leaves, the cross-section of leaves, the mesophyll cells. So the chloroplasts are actually concentrated uh, inside mesophyll cells. And uh, you can see a uh, magnified chloro, um, mesophyll's chlorif uh, magnified, you can see the chloroplast here. And the chloroplast can be seen here. So this is a drawn picture. You can see the outer membrane. This is the outer membrane, then this is inner membrane. Uh, so there is an intermembrane space here in between these two membranes. And inside it there is a stroma. You know, just like a mitochondria is having a mitochondrial matrix and outer inner membranes, uh, this chloroplast is also having outer inner membranes and stroma. Instead of matrix, this is called stroma. And the, the inner membrane of mitochondria is having in invaginations on which uh, the cristae, all the, I mean, this is called cristae in uh, mitochondria, uh, where ATP synthesis is arranged. Whereas here, there is no invagination of inner membrane. Instead of that, stroma is having certain uh, flattened uh, lamellae, uh, flattened uh, lamellae or sacs, which are called uh, lamellae or thylakoids. And these thylakoids are spread throughout the strom stroma. Some of them are, uh, are arranged like a pile of coins. So these are these are called granum. So there are uh, flat stromal lamellae as well as granal lamellae. And these lamellae or the thylakoids are uh, are uh, are having a lumen inside it or space inside it. So there are actually three spaces in a chloroplast. That is the intermembrane space, the stromal space, as well as uh, the the you can see here the thylakoid luminal space thylakoid luminal space so these sacs are actually having a space inside them that is thylakoid lumen so this lumen is very important mm, that's why we are we are uh, we are discussing the uh, lumen here uh, so we have to be aware that we uh, will discuss more about this thylakoid lumen and the role of this thylakoid lumen in the synthesis of uh, carbohydrates so this is the mitochondrion just for comparison and here you can see the mitochondrion and a chloroplast uh, so the figures can be compared here and chloroplast photosynthetic pigments and we know that chloroplast uh, chlorophyll is a photosynthetic pigment uh, for chlorophyll itself we have got a number of different types of classes of uh, chlorophylls depending on the uh, the light it absorbs from solar and solar light or the photons of a particular wavelength uh, it absorbs from solar uh, light sunlight and uh, we have divided these pigments into principal pigments and accessory pigments the principal pigments they are capable of releasing electron from them upon excitation whereas accessory pigments they their electrons gets excited but are not released 
they are capable of uh, transferring their excitation uh, electrons are excited excited means these uh, electrons uh, accept photons high energy photons they jump into a higher orbital uh, so they are said to be they are said to be excited now when they come down to the ground level the energy of uh, excitation is transferred to the adjacent molecule so that this, this this transfer will go on from one molecule to the next one next one next one till it reaches a pr principal pigment molecule so this is the system uh, that works uh, and accessory pigments they are not capable of releasing electrons and uh, this is important here and we will uh, learn how why this becomes important later so this is the these are the pigments yeah uh, chlorophyll a is a principal pigment as well as bacteria chlorophyll is also a principal pigment in bacteria whereas chlorophyll b uh, carotenoids like carotenes and xanthophylls, phycobilins, uh, which are present in bacteria, certain bacteria. These are all accessory pigments. And uh, uh, here, the chlorophyll A itself has got different types. Like uh, it depends on the the exact wavelength which is absorbed by the chlorophyll molecule. The chlorophyll A uh, uh, are of chlorophyll A six seventy three, six eighty, A six eighty three, six uh, chlorophyll A seven hundred, like that. So it basically depends on the, the exact wavelength uh, which is preferred, preferred by that chlorophyll, chlorophyll A. And this is the structure of chlorophyll A and B in general. It differs in the R group. The R group in uh, uh, chlorophyll A is CH3 whereas uh, CHO forms the R group in chlorophyll B. You can see here that the tetrapyrrole head, the tetrapyrrole head there with the four pyrroles and the central magnesium. Uh, this is like the heme in uh, hemoglobin where iron is the central molecule uh, here magnesium replaces iron uh, because uh, be because the, the, the excitation of uh, excitation energy of electrons comes down uh, very slowly in uh, uh, magnesium so that the, the the excitation transfer is made possible here so uh, this is unlike iron in uh, heme and the, the head is hydrophobic, whereas tail, uh, phytol tail is hydrophilic. You can see the molecular formula also, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, it differs because of the difference in uh, side group, R group. Yes, and this shows the um, absorption of light energy at different wavelength. And uh, as I said, uh, 400 to 500 is the best range for uh, chlorophyll A and B as well as 600 to 700. And these are the best uh, the, the best uh, wavelengths at, best, at, at which uh, chlorophyll A and B absorbs light. And I can see that here uh, it is the same wavelength uh, the rate of photosynthesis is highest which means chlorophyll A and B are the uh, main molecules involved in photosynthesis. And why uh, if there are chlorophyll A and B are there, why there are other pigments also in uh, this um, um, uh, chloroplast? Because the answer is that uh, because uh, there are other pigments which prefer different wavelengths of uh, light. So that you know, apart from the preference of uh, chlorophyll A and B, uh, carotenoids and xanthophylls and phycobilins, they absorb other uh, wavelengths also. Um, uh, solar energy of other wavelengths also so that enhances it enhances actually enhances the uh, light reaction it enhances the uh, process of photosynthesis and carotenoids um, carotenoids uh, xanthophylls um, and carotenes all these uh, you can read them as well as bacterial chlorophyll bacterial chlorophyll is a principal pigment in bacteria the molecular formula is shown there and this is the classes, different classes of bacterial chlorophyll, A, B, C, and like that. You can go through them. And photosystems. Now, as I said, we have got uh, principal pigments as well as accessory pigments. Uh, in chloroplasts, these pigments form clusters. Clusters called photosystems. And uh, primarily, there are two types of photosystems. Photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. So these photosystems are actually formed of accessory pigments and principal pigments we saw earlier. And there will be uh, around 200 to 400 pigments uh, forming a single cluster. 
most of them will be accessory pigments so that uh, more uh, more and more of the photons can be captured and electrons can be excited and will be sent from one place to another the excitation energy of the excitation will be transferred from one molecule to the other and it reaches the reaction center in the cluster and the reaction center alone is made of principal pigments so it's based on the the, the type of principal pigment that photosystems are divided into ps1 and ps2 and uh, you can see the the ps1 uh, has an absorption maximum of 700 nanometers so that is called uh, p700 and uh, for the system 2 for the system 2 uh, has an absorption maximum at uh, 680 nanometers and so this is called p680 so that is the difference between p uh, pigment system 1 or photosystem 1 and photosystem second uh, the photosystem first has at the center the principal pigment uh, is formed by uh, chlorophyll A P 700 whereas in uh, photosystem second the, the principal pigment or the reaction center is formed of chlorophyll A 680 so uh, as also uh, these are arranged on the thylakoid uh, membranes the membranes of the thylakoid as we saw in the chloroplast there are certain uh, flattened stack called thylakoids or lamellae which form granum and you can see here uh, the photosystem 1 photosystem second cytochrome bf and atp synthase we will we'll discuss about cytochrome bf and atp synthase later these are arranged on the uh, these flattened sacs and uh, you can see that uh, you can uh, discuss about it later and uh, these are the basic arrangement this is the basic arrangement of uh, a photosystem antenna complex of photosynthesis uh, you can see the sun, sunlight, the photons coming, falling on the accessory pigments. Uh, uh, this actually the electrons gets excited, the excitation energy is transferred. The process is called the sensitized fluorescence, and finally the the excitation reaches the reaction center, where there will be a chlorophyll A molecule. And uh, depending on the photosystem one or second, um, it can be P seven hundred or P six eighty. So an electron will be released and this electron will travel through certain protein assemblies, certain assemblies. Uh, so there, there is uh, where the uh, NADP is gets converted to or reduced to uh, NADPH and as well as um, ATP is formed. And this constitute uh, the, the light phase and um, we can see uh, the light reactions.